Pamela Riddle Bird. And uh, uh, what is your background before you ever got involved with, with Mr. Bird? What did you do? You were in. I used to run the largest innovation center in the country for the government to commercialize technology, and I work with inventors. That's and when's the first time you ever met Forrest Bird? I met him at a conference. Um, I can't remember the date. I'm not as good as he is. <laughs> what can I say? Long time ago? Or? I met him at a conference a long time ago. But what was your first impression of him? Did he tell you the background on me talking with the patent office on this one or not? What was my first impression? I just thought he was an interesting person. He's just an interesting person. I've had the opportunity to meet all kinds of interesting and fun people, but he was just, he's just a nice person. And uh, how did you guys start getting together? Did you ask on a date, or how did that work? How, how did that work? Well, he, um, I talked to him from the, let me see, from the first time I met him from the conference. Uh, he was just an interesting person. Of course, some of the others who were speakers were like Gene Landrum from Chuck E. Cheese, and uh, I think he brought Atari into the U.S. market. Jim Ferguson, Liquid Crystal Display, uh, Dr. Cade from Gatorade. So these were some of the other speakers at the conference, and there's many, many good speakers. There's like 15 different speakers, uh, 30 different workshops, six simultaneously running workshops in English and in Spanish. So, you know, Forrest is, is one of the speakers. He's a very, very good speaker. And then after that, I had invited him to be a speaker at a conference in Miami. And then what happened is uh, he said, oh, he would like to do that, but could I take a, uh, the day off before because he's coming from Idaho? And I thought, Idaho? Okay, when I said, you know, you're really, I'm really busy the day before because I'll have like three to 500 people at a conference. And I have many other speakers, but since he's coming from Idaho, I have to do news releases and a lot of different work. But I thought, Idaho? Okay. So I'll go ahead and take off the morning. Well, what I didn't know is Forrest knew Miami like the back of his hand. So that was very interesting. Um, but I agreed to take him all around. He asked if I would pick him up at the airport. And I said, well, what happens is there's a shuttle from the airport to the hotel where the, where the big conference is. He said he doesn't want to take the shuttle. He would like it if I pick him up from the, for the shuttle. I said, OK, no problem, because again, he told me he was coming from Idaho. I said, no problem. And then when I picked him up, he asked me if I had dinner. And I said, no, because I've been, you know, I've been working. He said, well, he would like to go to dinner. And I said, but I'm, I'm, I need to continue working. And he said, well, I think that you, uh, I would like for you to go to dinner. So I said, OK, I'll go to dinner. And, and um, so that was fine. It was just a nice, a, a business type dinner. OK, and then after the conference, he told me I look really tired and I needed a vacation. So um, I thought, well, gosh, I mean, what's the matter with me? Do I look that bad? Or I mean, what's the situation? He, then he sent me a ticket to go to Palm Springs. And I thought, well, that's kind of presumptuous that I, and, and it's, do I look that bad? And, and, um, and so, I, so he called me up and he talked to me and, and he says, no, 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 you'll have your own bedroom, everything, you just look tired. I want you to just take a rest. I know you work with inventors and I know it's like hard work. You're, you're traveling all over, you know, these are, use your own quarters. There's nothing to this. I just want you to have a rest. And I thought, well, okay, I think I could do that. And I guess from, from that point on, I'm just spending time with them. Now, the first time I went to Palm Springs, and I stayed in my own room in the house in Palm Springs, and we just had a nice time. We just enjoyed talking and getting to, to know each other and talking about inventions and inventors and intellectual property and marketing and the different types of inventors, the different types of personalities. So we just had a good time. And then he invited me um, up to Sandpoint, Idaho, you know, up here to, to Sandpoint, Idaho. And I remember we were walking along the runway and it was after a light rain. And there was worms that were crossing the runway, you know, because they were moving, you know, to a, a different, they're looking for, you know, a different ground. And with how tall he is at 6'4", he's tall and lanky, on how he reached down to pick up the earthworm to put it on the dirt alongside the runway. And I thought, that is so interesting, because it's a, you know, for, to reach all the way to the ground. And he, you know what, he made a comment and he said, the earthworms need, to, need taken care of and they have a right to live too. So he just wanted to help the earthworms. I thought that was interesting. 
So in your mind, this guy's different than the average guy you ever you knew. He's different. He is um, like inventors in many ways, but he, but for us, not because he's my husband. Well, maybe that's one reason he is he is my husband because he's he's a brilliant human being. But not only is he brilliant, his his character, his honesty. I don't think you can get an attorney from Harvard to write a contract that is more binding than his word, because his word is his honor, and his honor is everything. His honor is that of his country. He loves his country. He loves his work. I think it takes a special personality to understand the, um, to uh, live with and be married to any entrepreneur and especially an inventor. It takes a different type of personality. It's not the person who's going to work from eight to five. There's not really going to be some of the holidays that you would expect um, because of the amount of work. But you're going to do an, an inventor, a successful inventor. Almost, to me, most of the successful inventors have the same profile. Okay, but a successful inventor is just going to do whatever it takes. So there's not a time schedule. Uh, Forrest uh, today is, is 88 years old. He turned uh, 88 a couple weeks ago, and he still works 12 hours a day. But that's what keeps him young. Um, I've, I've traveled all over the world with him. I've watched doctors in Japan challenge him in a room of 2,000 you know, different doctors. And one thing, even with the languages, what I find quite intriguing is that a lot of times the younger doctors will, will challenge him and think, oh, here's this older gentleman. And uh, he will invite him to the blackboard. And they will, you know, you'll do an aquatic, a quadratic equation, and he could just fill up the whole blackboard because numbers, it, uh, uh, math is a universal language. And of course, his doctorates are in aviation, physics, and medicine. So it's always fascinating to watch him. Um, as in, is, okay? is that okay? Oh, you're doing great, yeah. Okay. What uh, else do you want to Now, the, um, so you're, when did you ever start getting involved with the venture? So have you just been fascinated with them? I've been, um, well, but before, before working with inventors, I was an economist. And uh, before that, I was in banking. So I started out at the age of 16 in banking. And then I, I um, was a labor market analyst, and then I was a, um, then I ran research teams studying alligators and lime and wine and potatoes and tomatoes and Indians and the prime time for a murder to happen. The, um, I studied the boating industry, the impact of the boating industry. So I've done some, you know, really intriguing type of work in primary market research, primary secondary market research, uh, running research teams, and then from that I was an economist, and then from an economist. I moved to the position of, the, of running um, the Innovation Center, director of the Innovation Center. Now, how long did you guys date before you started getting serious? Dating, I don't know when, the, when it actually changed. Um, Forrest and I had taken a, a trip, and it wasn't that, you know, it, was, it wasn't like a, a will you marry me. I think he assumed that I was just going to marry him. So one day, after we were married a few years, I said, Forrest, how did you know I was going to marry you? And I thought his answer was, was quite intriguing because he said, well, because I was going to do whatever it took. But uh, to, to take a step backward in that, we were in New Zealand, and he just automatically assumed and talked about, about our lives together, you know, and about getting, about getting married and and just being together. So on that trip, what I did is on the, on the, um, on the very last day, uh, when, when we were um, going to return uh, uh, back to the United States, I had given him a rock, and the rock said yes. How long were you going to be going together at that time, you think? So. Let me see. From the time, from the time of the conference, um, that was, the conference was in September, and then I went to Palm Springs, I think it was the next month, and then the following May we got married. And yeah, so where did you get married? We got married over at the Air Lodge by our house on the dock. Uh, we had, um, since I'm from Florida, we had many of the tropical trees that were brought in. So to me, it was just breathtaking as far as being surrounded um, in the mountains. In fact, it had snowed two weeks before. So we were surrounded with the snow-capped mountains on a beautiful, sunny spring day. 
Uh, the gardens had uh, shapes of hearts and tulips already that were coming up, surrounded by dusty miller. It was very beautiful. And um, there was also the, the trees that would be more native to Florida. So we mixed the mountains with the, uh, the tropics. And also right uh, during the ceremony, one of Forrest's friends decided to give a special treat. So during the ceremony, we were watching planes that were flying over. And actually, they were making hearts and writing love in the air. And then one of them had, uh, had dropped, had flown right over, and had dropped a teddy bear with a parachute. So it could parachute all the way down. And in fact, the teddy bear was an aviator teddy bear. It's all dressed like an aviator with the little earphones and everything. What is it about this guy that makes him so special, you think? Oh, his mind. There is no doubt about it. His mind, his integrity, his honesty. You can never get bored. I can talk to Forrest about any subject. It doesn't matter about any subject. Uh, one is, you know, people at first, they kind of looked at us with the, with the age difference. And they didn't know, you know, the, the, people assume a lot of things. But I don't care what people assume. I have five older brothers, two older sisters. I have walked the walks of life, and it has been wonderful. I've come from an incredible loving family and, and uh, just been very, very blessed. But as far as, as, far as forest, um, I think that so many people don't enjoy being with their spouses. Forest and I's chairs, our office, of all the different facilities, our office is in our home. And our chairs are back to back. And we literally complement each other. And I watch his backside all the time. Forrest is so honest that he thinks that everybody operates like he does. So he assumes that everybody he does business with his word is as binding as his would be because he takes people at face value. And I do take people at face value, but I watch very carefully on a lot of different issues and things from a business standpoint and, you know, to help along the way. And um, I, I am his right-hand person with a company, and I run my own company, but um, he is, he is, and I'm sure that you've heard this over and over, he's my best friend, he's my greatest support, he's my lover, he's my husband, and, and uh, my children love Forrest. They don't look at him as a stepfather, they look at him as the loving grandfather. Um, my daughter Rachel is one day younger than his grandson, they're only one day apart. So there's not a competition except in a great love and admiration. And I know that Rachel loves him. And, and Brandon, well, he taught Rachel to fly before she got her driver's license. And so when I watched her come in and land and fly in the air at, um, anyway, when I watched her uh, to come in and, 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 and fly in and land, I thought if she can command a plane, she can command her life. And she's done fine. And as far as Brandon, when Brandon gets stressed or anything, he relies on Forrest. I mean, I'm so blessed um, uh, to have the, the children and a, a, just a, a great family, yeah. He's got a lot of wisdom. He's got so much wisdom that if I sat back, if sometimes I get tired watching him think. It takes a special person to, like you said, to be with an inventor because they're, sometimes their mind is way out there. Sometimes. Well, their mind is way out there, but you might think on Thanksgiving Day or Christmas Day or, you know, a special occasion or something, uh, you know, but there's not time limits. I can remember when Forrest got a brand new computer and it was in the middle of the night and, and, I, and I went to see what he was doing. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning and I said, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm taking it all apart. And I said, why? I, is it broken? He said, no, I just got it. <laughs> and I said, what are you doing that for? And he said, I want to see how it works. I said, OK, are you going to be able to fix it and have it all back together? He said, oh, yes, yes. And then, then I remember another time he got, he loves Mac computers. And so he got a new Mac computer. It was a brand new model that had just come out. And he had maybe the third or fourth one. There was a problem with the computer. So he called them up, he spoke to their, you know, to the team of people, and, and they, they had not had the problem yet because he just got it in the, in, you know, in the mail, and, and uh, so he has this new computer, discovers a problem on, you know, day one or day two, and instead of returning it like a lot of people would, so he called up the team and um, talked to them about it. Well, 
since they did, hadn't had the problem, they didn't know how to fix it. And so Forrest worked on that computer for almost two weeks. He worked night and day, night and day, around the clock. He was so focused on trying to figure out what is the solution. So when he, when he did figure out the solution, he called up the head of the team at um, Apple and let them know so that they wouldn't have to go through the same pain and misery that he did in, in finding out a solution. And they were very thankful, and it's, it's a good thing.